Okay. We are alive. We are alive. We are alive. Hello. Hi, Olivia. Good to sit here with you. So formal. Oh, no. I know. It is so formal. Ashes. A little different than a normal Tuesday Live and a little different than a Wildcat wrap-up, but I thought today it would be fitting to come here and talk to you with the news that we shared this morning about our Argentina Tigers. So yeah. we'll, we'll give it a few more minutes to let people roll in, but Hello everyone, this is the Wildcat Sanctuary in Sandstone, Minnesota. I'm Olivia and I'm here with our Founder and Executive Director, Tammy. And we're going to talk about some news we shared this morning about a rescue that we've been working on and some updates with that rescue. So why don't you go into what the history is with this rescue, these tigers, and maybe some other international rescues that we've done. Yeah, um, you know, we're one of a few sanctuaries that does international rescue, and every time I do one, I say I will never do one again, and here we are, um, almost, th what, two and a half years later? Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So many of you remember that uh, in 2016, we welcomed seven lions from Argentina, and working with Argentina, uh, the government there decided that they wanted to be uh, more animal friendly, more eco friendly, and therefore they weren't going to display exotic animals in their government run zoos. And so they funded and uh, visited sanctuaries across the world and country and chose us for their lions. So that was awesome. So obviously, um, we still have some little yes, lions here today, yes. as you know. Um, Leo, Mansa, Gio, uh, Gino, Sophia, um, and so, and those are from Argentina. And so, at that time, they chose lions first because they're CITES II, which I know that's getting into mumbo jumbo speak, but they are considered threatened, not endangered, so you can get permits quicker. And that's pretty much why you see with Ukraine rescues too, why the lions came. Now, when you're dealing with endangered species like tigers or even leopards, um, that can be 12 to 14 months, and that's on the U.S. import side. Um, and part of those restrictions were originally meant so that people weren't taking tigers out of the wild and that they were only coming into the United States um, for real purposes, whether it be scientific, scientific propagating the species like zoos breeding them to enlarge the gene pool, but nobody ever had a provision for um, rescue. Yeah. And so we have to follow those provisions. Sorry, Oops, sorry guys. Uh, sorry, to, uh, follow those provisions of endangered species. And part of that is a sanctuary. We don't buy, breed, trade, or sell. Uh, we don't do conservation because we really work on providing wild at heart life to the captive cats. And so starting this row, we knew it was gonna be 14 months plus in the process. But we thought it was important because when we took in the lions in 2016, we were uh, asked at that time to take in tigers and we were like, well, that process will take so long. Why don't you find a closer home for the tigers near Argentina than the yeah. US based on our laws? Um, and so when I got that email two and a half years ago that said, can you help two tigers from Argentina and specifically the Mendoza Zoo where Saltania and Chapino came from, the lions, I couldn't believe they were still there and they didn't find them a home. Um, and so I went back in my emails and looked and quickly saw that it was the exact same tigers and it just broke my heart thinking that if we would have started the process in 2016, they might have been here obviously by now. So of course I said yes. Um, and then I found out again how geriatric and yeah. senior they were. So we began the import process, um, which you know we're still in today. Yes. Wow, that's a really interesting distinction between lions and tigers and what the difference is for them. And obviously, like you said, we're working on the captive wildlife crisis. We want to be making the most compassionate decision for our cats here, but also yeah. the cats that we're potentially rescuing. And like you said, these girls were older. Um, but why don't you talk about Lucy and Violetta a little bit, these two tigers that you're referring to. Um, you mentioned that you did know about them mm -hmm. when the yeah. seven Argentina lions came to us initially. So. You, you talked about also your emotions, seeing that they were still there, but what's their story? What about them specifically? So, um, the Mendoza Zoo has really, um, they're trying to do better. Mm -hmm. um, they've had a lot of issues over the past and many years with animal welfare, um, with an overpopulation, um, things like that, and really just lack of staffing and considering closing. Um, and so there's been advocates that have worked to try and get even their elephant left um, to sanctuary. And so when we heard Lucy and Violetta's story, we wanted to know more. 
about them. And Violetta, we knew right away that she had been there for her whole life. And Google searches for pictures for her um, shows that she was, you know, on the leash at some point, which was common 20 years ago. Um, she was very socialized to people, but now she was geriatric. And the first thing we saw on the vet records was that she had something called screw worm. And I always learn something new every time yeah. I rescue a cat. Never had heard of screw worm. So we, um, as soon as we saw those vet records, we researched it. And it is a parasite, um, a larva, that is eradicated from the U.S. and is banned from the U.S. because it takes over its host and is flesh eating. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see the photos of what was in her mouth and taking over her mouth was horrific. Mm -hmm. But the most recent vets there have done a really good job getting it done. We talked to the USDA, we talked to officials who said, she was banned, but then if she could be treated, surgically treated, yeah. all that removed, and then given a clean bill of health, that she could still come. So this was months of going like yes. this um, and making sure we had all the right protocols so she wouldn't get sh um, transported here and then banned from import right. and you know, that would be further awful. stress right. and not know what to do. So during that time, we were working on the permits, um, and she also had severe arthritis and mm -hmm. spondylosis um, from a bad knee claw and age, um, but she was just a love, just a love. And then there was Lucy, who lived next door to her, and both of them were are in small, old type of um, third world country zoos, yeah. um, and so all rock, no grass, um, pretty small. Um, but Lucy is a little bit younger, and she was transferred from another zoo many years ago. Um, she seems in much better health. She's got old age kidney issues, which we've seen, but no muscle mass leaving and things like that. And for some reason, she had not got the screw room, even though they had a screw worm, even though they had a shared wall. So we were, our vets were in contact over and over and over and over. Um, and so their personalities, they tend to be really great. They were rubbing on the fence, but they'd never lived together. So yeah. we were planning for two single geriatric female tigers coming to the sanctuary. Wow, and so that process took a long time. You were communicating with their vets, their caretakers, obviously working on the import process. And then you received an email in early February about an update about Violetta specifically. Yeah, um, prior to February, uh, with, as we got more and more information, the second exam that they did on Violetta, they showed that they had corrected her mouth and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, it still was a little like my heart was this cat's been through a lot we yes we've had older cats come from Argentina but this is a really old cat with a lot yeah. of health issues so we considered even um, flying over there and started researching flying so that I could see them in person because I don't want to bring a cat here that would not make it in transport or that might only live here a month or two exactly. um, and so as much as some people say, oh, let them you know, be at sanctuary for however long, it's, it can be stressful. Mm -hmm. And so um, we uh, got an email um, during the process. We were looking to fly over there and spend 10 days and everything that Violetta had passed away. And that email, it hit me hard, but it also gave me peace because I was really questioning because this process had taken so long, is it right to do this to her? Um, and I think she made that decision. Right. And I know the vets and the caretaking staff that are there right now, helping with the move to bring her here, were very compassionate. Yes. Um, the other thing we learned is that um, she, when they did her post-mortem exam, the screw worm had come back mm -hmm. and was the larva was back in her mouth, flesh eating. So on top of the renal failure of old age and the screw worm, I think, it happened the way it should have. I know yes. it's sad and we wish she yes. could have been here. I wish we would have started the process in 2016. Yeah, but like you said, it, that goes into compassionate decision making. We want what's best for the cats. You were kind of in that limbo phase and Violetta certainly resonated with all of us and is in our hearts and you purchased a memorial plaque for her. So she will be here at Sanctuary um, even Easier. after her yeah. passing, yes. And so Lucy is still in Argentina, and what's the mm -hmm. update with her? So the update is now is we received the import permit, which we all jumped for joy Yay. after 14 <laughs> months. 
Um, and then there was some technical difficulties. <laughs> surprise, um, surprise. surprise. <laughs> um, uh, the Argentina government, um, the providence they're in, has legally changed their providence name, which means we have to change and do an amendment to the permit. Mm -hmm. um, and it has to match the export permit perfectly. We are on month two and a half, maybe, of that, mm -hmm. um, and we haven't received any response, but we've submitted all the paperwork. Right. So I've never had to do an amendment for the permit, so I don't know if this is a one month process, three month process, we're back to the 14th month cycle. Yeah. I'm hoping not. Um, and then once we have that in hand, then they start the export process and we have to get their export permit, which will hopefully be, we have a draft of the permit, so yeah. they're waiting for it to match. And then we start transportation. And transportation, it's gonna, we're deciding where we're going, mm -hmm. which port, because each state needs different permits on top of it and different transport requirements. And the reality is we're planning per arrival, mm -hmm. but we're also really understanding that this is a day-by-day -day decision because if her health declines, because now she's already 20, right. um, she started out in this process at 18, that it might not be in her best interest mm -hmm. to bring her here. And if that ever happens, then I plan to fly over there. We plan to see her in person. Mm -hmm. We plan to fund or help fund the rest of her life yeah. at um, the Mendoza Zoo. Um, but again, we're hoping for a happy ending and it just might not be the happy ending we had set out for, right. but we're committed, so we see. Yeah, the logistics are extensive, but we're doing what we can as a sanctuary right now. And it really is a waiting game as it's continued to <laughs> yeah. be for literally years. But you, you mentioned that we're planning, we put in the paperwork, you're figuring out logistics of how to get her here, but what about life at Sanctuary? What happens if Lucy eventually does make it here? Yeah, so um, you know we're doing, as we talk to our supporters, a lot of big cat moves, and the big cat moves are for a lot of reasons. One is we have cats that are aging, so we want them to more um, smaller, appropriate habitats, and moving the smaller cats to the larger habitats. But on that, we're also looking at where that perfect space might be for Lucy. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we move everybody this summer, um, Winona is moving back next to Pandora. Mm -hmm. And then that opens up Winona's current front spot, which is a smaller habitat, great for geriatric, has shade, has the heated room. Yes. And even though Winona doesn't love females, mm -hmm. um, it's still a female that she's used to living next to. And so right. then we have the option in the building of moving Winona up front and Lucy back to Pandora, who we know loves other yes. cats, and, and trying it there. But um, definitely knowing we're taking in a senior cat, we're planning for it, and we are reserving a space for Lucy. Yes, so much thought mm -hmm. and care going into this process, just like with all of our 140 plus other rescues. And so I learned a lot, Tammy, just talking to you right now, but it's really, it's really special to think about what Lucy could experience, but also, as you mentioned, we're going to see this out for her. Regardless. Yeah, yeah, and, and I have to do a shout out to, um, without, because I know this person's private, but we have a very special supporter and donor who really wanted to see this process through. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, uh, because part of that permit was we have to meet the conservation guideline, yes. which we don't since we aren't breeding. Mm -hmm. um, we chose to donate to um, the Tiger Project on the ground and we, and we had to donate six thousand wow. dollars towards um conservation to be able to save this captive tiger yeah. that's been living in a zoo that's closing mm -hmm. and um and at first that was like that just doesn't feel right then. Yeah. but you know what in retrospect it feels very symbolic mm -hmm. that that donor made that donation on TWS's behalf to meet that requirement so that we're actually the work we're doing here does touch the cats yes. on the ground in the wild um, and I think that's really perfectly fitting more even so for Violetta and Lucy mm -hmm. symbolically than our cats here at the sanctuary yeah. so um, so he's been there every step away um, so thank you I know yeah. you want to remain anonymous and um, he's was willing to help um, fund my travel over there and make wow. sure we saw the cats and still is so he's definitely as invested as everybody is as I know you guys are mm -hmm. so um, I wish we had more news and I wish things happened quicker, but it's a process and yeah. international rescue is a lot of roadblocks and yes. roadblocks and roadblocks and uh, when it comes all together like it has quite a few times, um, then yeah, it's really a blessing for us and the animals. Well, that's 
incredibly special and in addition to that awesome story we obviously feel all of your support too and there's been lots of kind of comments on the post we don't know lucy and violetta of course in person but we've been very invested in this process just as you have so it means a lot to us your words of encouragement and your kind words with violetta's passing and i just want to say thank you all for the support and that we will keep you updated every step of the way um obviously we um, didn't announce Violetta's news right away for quite a few reasons. That was another amendment to the permit. Mm -hmm. It was people close to her were grieving, um, and so we uh, shared this news. We wanted to really wait to share the news till we had approval of the permit, so we had kind of put a happy ending. At least we know we're going right. in a direction to bring Lucy home. So yes. thank you guys so very much. Well, thank you for your time. Also, Tammy, I appreciate it. And I'm glad we could sit down and kind of talk this out a bit because I know it's very dense. It's a lot, a lot of steps in this and yes, process. So. so thank you. And I'm going to go in the live now. It's good to see you, everyone. Right. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.